I'm Jenny. And I'm Mac. And this is our dog, Disco. And together we live aboard our 1980 Allberg 37 sailboat. We've called it home for the last three years. So welcome aboard, we'll show you around. All right, so we're in Maya's cockpit now. And Maya is of pretty much a classic design. So she's over 40 years old. Um, that means better sailing, but it's kind of a smaller, more space optimized cockpit. We'll typically sit up here when it's when it's the weather's nice, and uh, we can host four pretty well. Um, six gets a little crowded, but uh, really four is comfortable. And you know we've got these seats here that you know you can move around. And everything these are really nice to have. Um, also when. Both of us are, the boat is underway and, and we're both up deck uh, on top here. Um, it's really comfortable just to sit here. You can you know, easily you know, sleep or do whatever. And so this is where we're driving the boat from. Um, we've got our chart plotter here, which has all necessary information. We also have an electronic autopilot, which is really nice just to be able to, to flip on a switch and you know, hit a button a couple times, just a couple degrees this way or that way. Really nice to have. So I'm here at the base of the mast, and this is where we control all of the, uh, the sails. So these winches and lines all connect in various ways to the sails. So when we're underway, um, it'll typically be me uh, working these lines where Jenny will be uh, driving the boat. Um, and so we really work as a team on this boat. So this is our Dodger here. Now, not all sailboats have Dodgers, but we're from the Northwest. So this Dodger has like literally saved us from just days and days of cold, wet wind and rain. So we like owe our lives to this Dodger. We just absolutely love it. So we've done some projects on Maya, uh, namely this, uh, this arch here with uh, 200 watts of solar panels. Uh, it's actually one of the best things we've done to Maya. It just helps so much uh, for power needs on these like sunny days. It's really great, great upgrade. Uh, we've also put in these seats back here. Uh, it's really nice for when we have, you know, more than four or five people in the boat here. It's great for people to just sit back here. They're out of the way. Even when we're underway, um, they won't be in the way of any of the lines or anything like that. So it's, these seats are really nice to have. So when we're underway, we'll typically be dragging a fishing line in the water. And so that's where it attaches right here. So we slip that in there and uh, fishing rod will go right there. And then we'll be trailing for... Um, you know, for fish while we're underway, which is a great way to fish because you're making miles and potential of having dinner. We've got, yeah, we've got a grill that we love using. We absolutely love using this grill. Uh, just a little propane grill right there. So we also have a self-steering wind vane. This is a monitored wind vane, which is a really cool system. Um, it doesn't require any power, but it can steer the boat um, while we're under sail. So it doesn't take any battery power or any fuel or anything like that. It's just this analog mechanical system that will steer the boat. It's, it's amazing. It's like black magic. The way we obtained Maya was um, we, we didn't really know what type of sailboat we were going to get, but we started with a list of blue water sailboats. And then we actually went to a coffee shop, wrote down everything we wanted in a sailboat, down to like that we wanted a wind vane, even a composting toilet. Mm -hmm. And then um, we even wrote down like the price that, that we felt like we could afford for a sailboat. And then you were looking online not even 24 hours later, yeah. and Maya came up on Craigslist of all places and we contacted the seller and literally it checked all the boxes down to even it was the, ex the exact same amount that we the they the were price. asking price the exact same amount we wrote down like, yeah wow and i looked up the name maya and it actually means like dreams become reality or become manifest and it also means illusion which i'm coming to realize boat ownership you know it's not always you know the 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 beautiful what beachy days yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's also the reality of you know living in a small place and uh you know maintaining sometimes the boat. you have your head in the bilge <laughs> and your hands are just yeah. dirty and just yeah it's... but i wouldn't have it any other way but right. yeah maya was her original name and we've kept it so when we first started out we did a week-long sailing course and that was our only experience prior to buying our sailboat so 
Uh, the first time we ever sailed together, just the us two was leaving the dock on our own boat and it was terrifying just going like two knots in the marina trying to get to the fuel dock. I lost sleep for weeks just <laughs> thinking about backing up the boat for the first time. It was, it was terrifying. Um, but yeah, we've come a long ways since then and um, our mental image like before doing all this is, was totally different than what reality was and honestly that's like the best part I'd say because yeah. you can't even imagine what adventures you're going to have and all the things you're going to see and do so um, yeah it's just a it's been a really a wild adventure and uh, it continues to be. All right, I'm here at the Companionway, and a lot of sailboats will have slats for their Companionway door, um, which is really a pain. You have to usually take like two or three pieces and kind of set them in, but we've got this nice door, which is pretty unusual for a sailboat. Also, um, when somebody is um, on watch up here and the other person is down, be down below sleeping, we can kind of easily see each other through the glass, um, kind of keep, keep an eye on each other while we're, while we're sailing. So now let's uh, go below and I'll take you down and show you the interior. Uh, so coming down the companion way, um, we've got this step here that we installed. Uh, Max Cousin actually laser cut the insignia, uh, the design of Cruising Maya. So that's inlaid here. And then moving over to the galley area. First, we've got our sink here and we do have salt water. So that comes right in from the outside. And then also a fresh water. This is a foot pump. It's very nice because it we can conserve water really well, so you don't use really more than you need. And then um, moving over to the this is our fridge, and I really call it like the black hole because you really have to reach down. It's pretty deep, but um, a lot of things do get lost down there. But I've got my own system of organization for it. And one of the other things we do here on Maya is sourdough bread. So I've got my sourdough starter and then all the, the different flours that I need, the all-purpose flour, the bread flour, um, everything here. So we cook up uh, nice, nice baked goods here on Maya. Uh, here in these shelving, we keep all of our utensils, spices. Um, these are nice uh, because you can, you know, close everything up and um, when you're heeled over from side to side on a boat, you know, everything stays put. So one of the most uh, well-used appliances here on Maya is definitely our three burner stove. We love it and we are always uh, making coffee, afternoon cup, and then also uh, for baking bread, we also have a nice oven down here that uh, can uh, cook various things and it also gimbals so when we're again you know the sailboat's always moving um, when while we're underway you can also be I've even made uh, frittata while underway and so you know the eggs are you know moving but yet since it's gimbaled uh, you can cook whatever you want uh, even while you're moving and then back behind here we have a storage for a lot of our glassware cups um, and then uh, also our mugs, those are also stored down here. Um, our bowls, uh, these just slide back and forth. Again, it's always super critical to keep things closed while we're underway because um, the boat lets you know it if, uh, if things aren't put away because things will go crashing down once you're, once you're moving. Okay, we're over on the starboard side of Maya here in the salon area, and um, this cushion I'm sitting on actually pulls out, so uh, we can uh, have a little bit bigger area to sleep on. There's also a lee cloth that we can set up, so when we're underway, um, we're nice and snug in that spot. Um, and then here we have our book storage, some of our electronics. Um, the drone is always ready to fly for Mac. Um, also down below there are also three compartments and those also store mainly food. So we can hold usually up to three months worth of food pretty easily on Maya. So we have a Dickinson uh, wood burning stove. So this actually opens up, we can put uh, solid fuel in there, um, usually compressed wood, and that'll actually heat this uh, whole boat up to, we've gotten it up to uh, 80 plus degrees. So it's really, it's pretty efficient once it's all closed up and going, uh, but you do have to keep it going pretty often. So I'm over here on now the port side of the salon area. And so this uh, cushion area actually pulls out to a double bed. So two people can sleep here. Um, we also have three cabinets here, which uh, house a lot of our 
food, dry goods up here. And then above that, we have our fishing rods and our uh, pole spear. So we'll use these when we're out uh, fishing and um, diving and uh, trying to catch our dinner. Another great feature of the boat is this table here, which just unlatches. It's really easy to uh, to set up. So you just putting that down. And then voila, we've got a table here. And the other side can also fold up. So we can easily get six people around this table comfortably. We also have our logbook here, which is essential on a boat. So we keep track of um, all of our positions, um, our mileage, where we go, or each harbor that we go to, um, as well as our fuel consumption too. We keep track of that. And another key critical piece on a boat is your engine maintenance. So you, keeping track of how many hours are on the engine, where you're at in your engine maintenance is critical. I'm up in the V-Birth of Maya, and this is where we sleep usually on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, we also keep all of our clothes stored. Uh, Max has this side, and then I've got all my clothes stored up in here. So usually we just roll our clothes. Actually, none of our clothes are hanging. So um, on the boat, you know, that is the compromise, but um, you know, just keeping less clothes aboard is just easier that way, less laundry too. All right, so we're in the head here in Maya, and we have the, the sink area, which is also a hand pump sink, which is nice. Again, you can serve tons of water this way. So we have a composting toilet, which we've been really happy with. Um, it's great because it's uh, you don't have to pump out anywhere or find somewhere to pump out, and you're not putting things into the ocean. Underneath me here is more storage. There's uh, quite a bit of storage here in the head. We don't have a shower, unfortunately, on Maya. So what we'll do is we'll use uh, shower bags and usually shower by jumping into the ocean and then um, kind of rinsing off with fresh water with, with that shower bag. So Disco is a rescue. We've had her for about seven years. Um, we got her over in central Washington and she's been with us even way before the boat and she transitioned to boat life uh, famously. So she does a great job. She doesn't get seasick. She knows where to use the bathroom on the boat. So you can get up and down the companionway, super easy. Yeah, yeah she's, she's, great. she's a great little boat dog. In Maya here, there's roughly 220 square feet of living space with like 60 square feet of walkable space. So that initially was was a transition, but um, I'd say we we did it all right, you know, as far as just, you know, figuring out. And, and now it's all, everything has a place and everything's organized. So now that's not really a, a struggle at all. Yeah, the first time we moved on the boat, we had all this stuff. And then um, once you're living on the boat for a couple months, you realize what you really need and don't need. And so it was easy to kind of go through those things and just take that stuff off the boat that you're really down to your bare essentials. Yeah, and now struggle, the kind of a new struggle is cruising full time uh, and maintaining the boat and everything. Cause you know, it's an old, the, the boat's 40 years old and boats just require a lot of maintenance. And it's one thing to be maintaining a boat when you're at the dock in your home marina and you know all the stores, you can drive there. But now we're, we're traveling, we're in a new town pretty much every other day or so. Uh, we don't have a car, we don't know where anything is. It's hard to get parts. Um, so that's, that's kind of a struggle, I guess, just cruising in general. And then as far as, as, far as captaining duties, uh, I would say we both 50-50. You know, when we're on like a long passage, we'll have three hour shifts where, um, you know, at the end of your three hours, you're, you're up, you're driving the boat, you, you're the captain of the boat and then the other person is, is generally sleeping. That's, you know, it's usually just the two of us running the boat. So um, yeah, if we're running for three or four days, it's just that three hour schedule. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of times when we're out cruising, we're catching fish, especially up in Alaska, mm -hmm. there was um, salmon, halibut, lingcod, you name it. Uh, we were catching it and uh, it's great because that's uh, a way to feed ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, delicious dinners, we can store it in our freezer. Um, it's also fun to just out there fishing, catching fish. Yeah, and crab and prawn. Yeah, we caught it all up there. That was really, it was a delicious trip up north. Uh, yeah, we had <laughs> all the fishing gear. We had a crab trap, prawn trap, 
Um, we have, I think, five different fishing poles aboard, a pole spear, so we've got tons of different lures, so we're set with the fishing gear. Okay, so under here, we've got our 30 horse diesel engine. Uh, it's really easy. We've got basically two pieces come off like that, and we have really just awesome access um, for anything that we have to do on our engine. Um, we maintain it ourselves, so having that this space and easy access is just critical for us. Underneath this floorboard here, it's kind of cluttered, but we kind of have our wood storage and whatnot, but also our main water tank. So we carry about 70 gallons of water aboard Maya, which um, roughly gives us two to two and a half weeks of, of comfortable living. Under here, um, we've got the heart of our electrical system, which is three 100 amp hour uh, lithium batteries. So we can basically, to, to get our daily usage of electrical power, we, can, we have to run the engine for roughly 30 minutes a day. Um, but uh, yeah, and, and if, we're, if we have oh, with a full charge, we can live off of just the energy that's in these batteries. Uh, and the solar on sunny days, we can have three and a half days of electrical storage, which is which with a freezer running and a large fridge. So it's really great. This the lithium upgrade has been a, really a game changer for us. Yeah. So some advice for anyone who's watching this that might want to try this. Um, I would say that um, you know the smaller the boat, the the easier it is to maintain, and the costs go down. Basically, um, you want to buy a, as small of a boat as you can. That's that's the key to the whole thing. Um, costs just rise exponentially as the size of the boat grows. Um, just in terms of maintenance, uh, moorage, everything gets harder with a bigger boat. So uh, you definitely want to get as small a boat as possible. And don't be afraid to do your own maintenance and all mm -hmm. your work on the boat because then you're just more intimately knowing the boat and its systems and you know if something does happen out there then you you know how to fix it. Thanks everyone for coming aboard and checking out our tiny home on the water. And if you want to follow along on our adventures check us out on YouTube and Instagram at Cruising Maya and also at cruisingmaya.com.